Back on Bullseye, we're going to take a look at the second half highlights with UB head coach Turner Gill. First play we're going to let get, coach. The defense stepping up again. This is another forced fumble. This time, Sherrod Lott, Dominic Cook, recovers, gets his second turnover of the game. Jackson under pressure in the pocket. He pulls it down to run at the 35, at the 40. 45, ball, 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 ball. ball loose. Still loose. Looks like the Bulls may have it. Another great opportunity for our defense, creating a turnover, creating takeaway. We tell them to take away the football and, and create that opportunity. So the great job here by, by uh, Cook here, getting the fumble. Great job by Sherrod Lott right there with the strip. That's what we teach those guys to do is rake, strip, pull, whatever you need to do to get the ball out. And great job by Dominic Cook uh, getting on the football. And this is an important part of the game, especially for the defense to step up because the offense was struggling. Well, this is a very key point because the guy makes a great run right here for about 20 plus yards and then we create the turnover there. And then the biggest thing is for us to get on the football because sometimes you, you get a ball that's on the ground and we don't cover it. We always talk about effort. We always talk about hustle. And that's why you talk about this situation, because if you don't hustle, you don't have effort, if you don't have people around the football, then you don't have that opportunity to cover the fumble. So great job by our defense. Well, as Dominic Cook's fourth fumble recovery of the season, that leads the MAC. And now, even when Ohio scores, you guys still get points here with a block by Kendrick Hawkins, and then Andre Smith takes it the other way. Well, this is a, it's only two points, but I think this is a great, great play in the turn of the game. Was, uh, this is an opportunity here for us to uh, get some momentum. Great job by Andre there. I knew he had enough gas in him to get the thing to the end zone there. I'm happy for him. He's already playing really well for us. A great, great situation for our defense, special teams there. Again, guys play hard, always be at the right spot. We always talk about scoop and score. We always have a guy ready for that type of situation. You never know what's going to happen. You do it 50 times in a, in a season, and it may be once or twice in the whole season where it may occur and what's great for our guys to be in the right place at the right time. Well, not to be overshadowed, Kendrick Hawkins comes in, makes the block, but it was nice on the plane ride home when this was the number three top play on ESPN Sports Center, and the whole plane started cheering for Andre Smith, just so you could see how much they're glad that he's back in the lineup this year. Well, it's, it's great for our university to get some exposure, both from an academic standpoint and athletic standpoint, and uh, again, it's exciting for our football program to get a team to get recognition across the country. Well, midway through the fourth quarter, you told the offense, after Ohio scored, you said, answer the bell, and they certainly did that with James Starks with another big run for him, this time a 52-yard touchdown. Hands it to James, hole on the right, and through the hole, oh. there he goes. 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Well, this is a crucial situation right here. Third and two call, and he ended up uh, hitting a big crease there. Great job by our offensive line there. Uh, again, James has great speed, great uh, acceleration and uh, again just took the ball in the end zone but our tight end did a great job there up at the top we got Jesse Rack, Andrew West and, and Jeff Niedermeyer there on the right side did a great job along with Chris Lazio so again our football team answered the bail there we had to get a score and then uh, we answered the situation there that's a great job by our offense. Well and you challenged the offense you called the same play three times in a row and said make it happen. Well that's no secrets I said hey I don't care whether they know we're coming or with this play or not, uh, you got to do what you got to do and then block the guy across from you and get the job done, and we'll see what we're all about. And uh, again, it's great for our, our football team, our offense, to answer the bell offensively, defensively, and special teams in the fourth quarter. Well, in the final play that we're going to see, and this is a theme throughout the game, the few times that Ohio did have some big plays, the team still comes up big. We got 6.25 to go in the ball game. It's 32-19 Bulls. Waiting for the shotgun snap is Jackson. He gets it. He's in the pocket. He looks, he looks, he looks. Now he throws deep down the field, and it is caught. Caught by the receiver. Goulet Fumble. ball comes loose. It is fumbled and picked up by the Bulls. Well, yeah, this uh, I saw they competed the pass, and I'm like, oh, no. And then all of a sudden, I see him get another strip. Great job by Chris Storr. And again, I got the hustle by our whole defense because you got to be around the football and great effort to be around it. And so, uh, again, Devontae Shannon recovers the fumble recovery. A great job by our guys stripping the ball, and that's what we teach every day is talk about takeaways with our defense. Now one down, four to go, but how important was it to get this first win on the road? Well, it was key for us to get this win here to, to, to set the tone for our, for our whole football team and our whole program here to, to go on the road, win the football game there. Coming back home, we'll have an opportunity to have a great crowd here on election night, and so it's great for us to get the momentum. Two games uh, we won in a row right now, and so that, that, that keeps the momentum going. We keep believing, we have confidence, and we keep doing those things, and we have success. And so our guys have played really pretty much uh, good football throughout the whole season. So we had an opportunity to win just about every game, and that's all you want to do is have an opportunity to do that. And so now we get ready for Miami. It's going to be a great opportunity again on election night. 
well, uh, not only on election night, but a national TV audience the first time that the Buffalo Bulls will be on ESPN2, a full nationwide audience. Well, this, uh, this sets the tone even more. Uh, yeah, I hope our fans and our student body, everybody comes out and watch us play. We have a good football team. We're on our way to a great football team. we still got some things to do, but hey, it'd be a great opportunity here at National Televised and so what Buffalo University, Buffalo Bulls football is all about, what our fans are all about, and we got great support and got a great university. We take a look at the Miami program. A lot of them thought that they're going to be right at top of the MAC this season. They have struggled quite a bit, as a lot of teams in the East have. What is some of the reasons why they've struggled so much this season? Well, I haven't watched them a whole lot at this point in time, but I know that uh, every team is very, very good in the MAC conference, and you got to play well every single night, every single day. And so Miami is uh, traditionally one of the powerhouses in the Mid American Conference. I know Shane Montgomery, their head coach, does a good job. Uh, they didn't play well their last ball game, so I know that they're going to be a little bit on edge and, and be ready to play an outstanding game. And so we're, we're on edge, too. And so we're anticipating them to play well, but we're going to even play better. Well, Coach, you proved on Tuesday night that the Bulls love playing in front of ESPN crowd, so let's try to do it one more time next week against Miami. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Go Bulls. All right, that is UB head coach Turner Gill. Don't forget, next Tuesday night, national television audience come out and fill UB Stadium Tuesday night against Miami. We'll be back with more right after this. My best Halloween costume probably was when I was a girl in elementary school. Everybody thought I was my sister. The, uh, the scream mask because it's just scary. <laughs> Dracula in uh, like the third grade. Uh, best or worst Halloween costume I would have to say was Power Ranger. I always wanted to be one. The best Halloween costume would probably have to be anybody from uh, Reno 911. Best costume you've probably seen. Probably dude that was dressed up as a real, real scary vampire dude. I'm gonna go with uh, the old school fudgums from Domino's. Jerome, aka Romy Rome off of Martin. Probably the best Halloween costume is football player. Best Halloween costume would be uh, Ninja Turtles outfit. I mean, it's goofy looking, but at the same time, I guess it's heroic. Senior lineman Mike Thompson got the game started off on a right foot yesterday in Ohio as he recovered a fumble in the end zone. And Mike joins us right now. And Mike, let's talk about that play. That was a play that was set up by a big return by Ohio. It looked like they were going to go in and tie the game up, but you guys shut the door in an important part of the game. Yeah, I mean, we, we started off playing good defense, and uh, Justin Winters came up, made a good play, stripped the ball out, and I uh, you know, grabbed it in the end zone, fell on it, gave our offense another opportunity. Well, this is a game that saw a lot of opportunities for the defense to step up and make plays, and you guys were able to do that. You forced seven fumbles total, recovered four of them, and also got an interception. So you guys really answered what Turner Gill and Jimmy Williams had asked you guys over the last couple weeks, cause more turnovers. Yeah, any time that you can get the ball that many times, you know, you're going to have an advantage to you know, go ahead and get a W. So we did a good job. The ball was wet. It was raining, snowy. So uh, we knocked it out when we had our opportunities. When you guys came into the season, you guys really said, we can take the MAC East division. And now that you've got the five games in, in a five-week stretch down the road, you took care of business Tuesday night against Ohio. How important was that game to get the MAC East portion of the schedule off on a right foot? I mean, that was a great win. We needed that one, you know, four and four, especially if we want to go to a bowl. You know, there's not a team out there that uh, we can't beat. We need all four of these last ones. How was the, the preparation different this week? Because you're playing on a Tuesday night. You guys never play on a Tuesday night. Get a 10-day break. How difficult was that for you guys to try to transition into a, a little bit of an extended work week? I mean, it's a, a little bit different, you know, practicing on Saturday and Sunday when other teams are playing. But, you know, I like it. You're on uh, national TV and everybody gets to watch. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit different. And you know, I think our team really is enjoying it. When you guys have a national TV audience like that, we'll have that next week on ESPN2 against Miami. Do you guys as a team, do you talk about that as players and say, listen, everybody's going to be seeing us. We need to step our game up. I mean, it's not like we play better, you know, with not being on TV or not. But everybody, every game, you got to come out to play, whether it's on TV or not. But I think it gives everybody else a little bit extra energy. And, you know, it's nice when people back home that can't come to the games can get to watch it. Well, Mike, congratulations on a big game against Ohio on Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you do some big things next week against Miami on ESPN, too. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.